You guys know me when it comes to video game music. I can be very picky. It's why I'm so happy that I can introduce you guys to Hotline Sawani. He makes legitimately great Sonic lo-fi and synthwave remixes. Just take a listen for yourself. He also does 80s synth pop music for vocal sonic songs, and they sound surprisingly good. His Sonic mixtapes are the best place to listen to what he has to offer, compiling some of his best remixes into one video that you can chill and study to. The link to his YouTube channel is in the top of the description, and I absolutely implore you all to subscribe to him. He's genuinely underrated. I hope nothing but the best for you, man. Thanks so much for sponsoring today's video. What's up guys, it's been a while since I made my last actual video, I know I've done a couple of streams, but yeah, I've been really busy with university, that's actually just finished, so I have more time to do stuff like this, but apologies for the wait, we're getting another video out, let's talk about our lord and saviour, the Sonic, we all love him, and I've got a bone to pick, sort of, I don't know if this is going to be a ranty video, I really hope not, I want to come across as civil, I'm not really stressed out or anything, I just, it's a, it's a thing that I've been seeing thrown around a lot on the internet, and it's this whole patience argument with Sonic the Hedgehog, and recently there was a clip with Aaron Webber that recently surfaced, and I want to talk about it because I disagree with it a lot. Like, there are so many things that I disagree with with this clip. Here's the clip here, I don't know how much of it I'm actually going to play, but I'm going to play it, and then let's just talk about it afterwards, and why I disagree with pretty much everything that he says. By the way, before we do that, no hate to Aaron Webber at all, he's just trying to do PR, that's fair, nothing against him, but that does not mean that I can't disagree with what he's saying. He's a very cool dude, so please don't take this as like, I'm trying to hate on Aaron Webber, because I'm not, I'm simply just having a discussion, critiquing this little clip here, and why I disagree with the points overall, but let's discuss it. I guess, okay, the, the question I guess I'll tackle here as, as we wrap up is all these people going like, yo, we've been in quarantine for a long time, uh, we're kind of bored, we, we want something to distract us, like, what, what are you going to give us news on what's next for Sonic, right? Everyone's kind of going like, when's the next game, when's the next big update, when's the next the next big thing, right? Um, and if you've watched a previous streams, you've already heard this answer, but just to kind of get it out there again, um, this, this is a different Sega than the one that existed in the mid-2000s and even the, the early 2010s. And that Sega um, was very focused on kind of like getting a lot of Sonic product out there, right? You'd see a game or even two games um, every year, right? And one of the things that, that we all learned, right, and you guys know this as the audience, is that when you, when you are um, trying to get content out so quickly, a lot of times you're not able to get it to the quality bar that you want to get it to, right? And so we, we've slowed that down more recently ever since kind of Sonic Pillar started in 2015. You'll notice things have slowed down a little bit. And then, hey, here comes Sonic Mania, right? And so as you see that kind of that trend continuing, that, that's going to continue um, as we go into this year um, and into the future. So yes, you might have to wait a little bit longer between like big announcements. And yes, we know that no one likes to wait. But at the same time, we feel that it's it's worth it in the end when we can deliver something to you that that is um, higher quality and that has more time um, being able to put into it. So again, we know nobody likes to wait, but uh, thank you for being patient. Um, and yeah, exactly, quality quality over quantity is sort of the mantra here. Um, and that's something that even even the, the head of the company um, has said in the last couple of years, and that's something that we believe in very strongly. So again, very different Sega and different approach to uh, Sonic stuff in general, um, but we're very confident in it, especially going forward, so. So the thing that stuck out to me straight away was him saying that this is not the old Sega. This is a new Sega, unlike the past Sega. This is like, he, he basically implies that this is a better Sega because past Sonic games were just of inferior quality, according to him. I disagree. 
I completely disagree with this. I think by saying that this is a new Sega, we're not like the old Sega from the 2000s and the early 2010s. Is that kind of just devalues all of these past Sonic games and just says that they're just nowhere near as good as what we have now? I can't, I just, I can't agree with that. Especially when he highlights early 2010s. That's like Sonic Colors. That's Sonic Generations. That's Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. These are all great games. Why are these being treated as if they're like these rush titles? Sonic Colors is a game that they constantly, over and over again, refer back to. They're going to be re-releasing Sonic Colors this year. And yet that's apparently part of the old Sega way. AKA, it's rushed and of inferior quality. That just seems kind of backwards to me. Sonic Generations is easily one of the best Sonic games ever made. And that's also lumped in with the old Sega. What? That does not make sense to me. And obviously this argument goes into the whole quantity over quality thing, but I don't even think that holds true. Funnily enough, I don't think that holds true for any of the games that have released, including Sonic Mania. So if we're counting the games since the new Sega, according to Aaron, we've had Sonic Mania, Sonic Forces, Team Sonic Racing, and Mario Sonic at the Olympic Games. Sonic Mania was a good game, absolutely. No discrediting Sonic Mania, but that was not without its bugs when it first released. That game was kind of a mess on launch. The PC version was even delayed, so that wasn't even like a game that was like of the highest of quality ever. You would have things like just audio disappearing, clipping through floors, just all of these things. Even now, there's still glitches in the game. It's not the most polished thing in the world. That game was messy at launch. All you have to do is do a YouTube search for that. You'll find glitches in Sonic Mania. So that wasn't of higher quality than anything we've gotten before. Forces, of course, we all know was rushed as hell. Team Sonic Racing felt very budget and rushed. And Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games is one of the weaker ones of the series. London 2012 is better. The Winter Olympic Games is better. If we're in the new Sega, surely this Mario and Sonic game must be leagues better than the past ones. But no, it doesn't even include Dream Events, which is like the thing that everyone loves about these games. And they didn't include them. So none of the games released by the supposedly new Sega are even of a higher quality. Like they have not been worth this huge weight in my opinion at all and another thing he says that sonic mania was like this is what happens with the new sega when we wait we get games like sonic mania and while i understand what he's trying to say with the whole like yes we we listened to the fans we made another classic sonic game which is something they tried to capture with sonic 4 and failed it was a good creative decision but it wasn't even meant to be the main event and in fact i'm pretty sure the development time was even less than normal mainline Sonic games. Games like Sonic Generations had three years, I believe, of development time, and I think Sonic Mania had two. So my real question here is, where's the proof for the higher quality games? Like, what games have we had here that are of higher quality than anything we've had before? Because I, I think it's worse. I, I honestly believe that in some cases, these games are of us worse quality. Forces is worse quality of generations, just as TSR is. TSR is of a lesser quality than Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. Mario and Sonic at the Tokyo Olympic Games is of lesser quality than the London game. And Mania, I... It's hard to compare Mania because it's more of a side game, but let's say I compare that to games like Sonic Rush, Rush Adventure, Colors DS. One doesn't seem to be of higher quality and polish than the other. So I just don't think the statement holds true, really. Not at all. And getting back to the point of devaluing past games, I believe that it's not the games being rushed. Obviously, games have been rushed like Sonic 06 and Sonic Heroes, but many times it's not been to do with them being crunched for time. It's simply been the creative decisions and chasing trends. Sonic and Leaf tried to chase the God of War action trend by including the Werehog. Sonic and the Black Knight tried to incorporate waggle controls for the Wii. It wasn't that these games were rushed or of less quality, it's that the inherent creative ideas were just bizarre. Sonic with a sword, Sonic being a werewolf, it's just these weird things. I would not call Sonic Unleashed a rush game. I would not call Black Knight a rush game. I wouldn't call games like Sonic Rush, the advanced games, the handheld titles for the most part, they don't feel rushed. Sonic Riders doesn't feel rushed. The Olympic games don't feel rushed. Is Sonic Adventure Rush 2? Like, yeah, the game's kind of glitchy, especially the GameCube version of the game. But when Adventure just came out, it was very critically acclaimed. And obviously the glitches have been more noticeable due to time and just games aging poorly. 
but I don't think Sonic Adventure was a rushed game. Hell, I don't think Adventure 2 was really a rushed game. Adventure 2, from what I remember and from what I've played, is a pretty polished game. Sonic Heroes is kind of not, that game is pretty buggy. But Adventure 2, yeah, I think that is a pretty polished product right there because it, it smartly used its assets for the different characters. Like, for example, you would have Sonic in Green Forest and you would have Shadow in White Jungle. It's the same assets, but just different atmosphere and different music to make them feel different from one another. It was smart use of assets, and that's what that game did to stop it from being rushed. They just used the assets that they got, scaled it down, and thought creatively, how do we spread this across the whole game across multiple different Different characters and that's what they did when we get to games like Sonic Heroes and Sonic 06 yeah they are definitely rushed but honestly I believe the games that are rushed are the minority not the majority so for all of them to be lumped together as just like the old Sega I think is pretty lame especially when they're releasing this encyclopedia about Sonic's 30th anniversary full of these games these are games from the old Sega so why are they good enough to be in this encyclopedia, eh? It's just such a diminishing term. I just, I can't agree with it. Unless we see a game and there is an obvious improvement in quality, like beyond anything we've ever received for the Sonic series at all, I cannot agree with this statement and I never ever will. It just, it also makes me sad because it just shows a lack of faith in these past games, you know? Like, acknowledging your failures is a good thing. You need to improve on what you've done wrong, of course. But ignoring what made your game so great is, I think that's really sad as like a designer. That, that upsets me. Especially the earlier 2010s thing, that, that gets me the most. Sonic Generations, are we just... Are we ignoring that game was like really polished and like super good and like Sonic was back on track? Even Sonic Lost World. There are definitely some signs of the game being rushed such as when you get to Sky Road and a lot of the assets are from Windy Hill. But for the most part, the problem with that game wasn't that it was rushed, it was the weird bizarre creative decisions. Such as the multiple different gimmicks that the game had like skydiving or sand sliding or auto scrollers or endless running, like, just a lot of these weird mishmashy things in the game. It wasn't the fact, oh, this game was rushed to meet a deadline, it sucks. No, it's because the inherent idea of the game taking place on random tubes and being like Super Mario Galaxy and being generic, that, that was the issue. Those were the issues of the game, not the rush factor. In fact, Forces is one of the games that is obviously rushed. The game is super scripted, super sure. You can tell where they reused all of the assets. You can tell that the music, because it's more synthy, probably had less production values put into it than even Team Sonic Racing. So that's one of the rushed games right there. Team Sonic Racing reuses models from a Mario and Sonic game. Almost half of the game is reused racetracks. And there's not that many racetracks in general. There's actually only seven zones. So there's only seven different environments in the game that they had to spread across 21 racetracks? That feels kind of rushed to me. The gameplay engine is exactly the same as Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. Like, if anything, that's a rushed game. Forces is a rushed game. I wouldn't call Mario and Sonic rushed. I would just call that lame and just not ambitious at all. And not really of a higher quality than the past Mario and Sonic games at all. Maybe except for Rio, but Rio was like, that's bottom of the barrel right there. So even comparing anything to that, it's just, that's not an achievement. I guess my, my point overall is that we shouldn't be like treating old Sega as just this trashy company. Because that's kind of what it feels like we're doing right now when they've made so many banger titles. And like, they were so ambitious. And of course they could get greedy. Of course they would be pumping out loads of Sonic games. And there are, were some few games that were rushed. I'm not saying there were no games that were rushed. I'm saying they are the minority, not the majority. I don't think Adventure and Adventure 2 are rushed. I don't think Unleashed, Colors, Generations. I don't feel like those are rushed games. Lost World I don't think is rushed. All of the handheld games, I don't think they're rushed. Sonic Riders, I don't think they're rushed. The Mario Sonic games, I don't think they're rushed. So which games are we really talking about here? Because is it Sonic 06 again? 
Are we still trying to go off of the fact that Sonic 06 is a bad game? Blah, blah, blah. It's been 15 years since Sonic 06, dude. 15 years. Can we get over it, please? I don't know if he was talking about early 2010s because of Sonic Boom, because obviously that was a pile of garbage, like everybody knows it, but by saying early 2010s, you're encompassing everything. Sonic Boom was like at the end of the early 2010s, it was 2014, the very end of 2014. I guess maybe clarity is an issue here as well. If he was saying like, we don't want to make games like Sonic Boom, we don't want to make games like Sonic 06, then the, the points I would understand more, but I still would say that those are the minorities and not the majorities. So my final end point here, final, final end point. I know I've kind of dragged this on, I'm so sorry. Just me rambling, I'm just, <laughs> I'm sorry. But I'm passionate about this, you know, I, I care about these games. My final point is that we shouldn't treat old Sonic games as just rushed garbage titles. I think they should be embracing these games. Not all, like uh, Sonic 06, we already know. But Adventure, Adventure 2, Unleashed, Colors. I think Heroes is a pretty bloody good game, but I can absolutely acknowledge that the game was rushed. Whether it be with the reused level designs and some of the levels and the abundance of glitches, but I still think the game had a good heart and I still think it was far better, far better, in fact, leagues better than anything we've gotten now other than Mania. Mania is like the only game from the past four years that you can see, yet yeah, this is of a quality. Because he also, Aaron Weber also said that the past games didn't meet the quality expected. It's like, oh, what? Come on. Like, that is such, that is so devaluing, the past Sonic games. Like, you can't do that and then also re-release them, celebrate them, like, just kind of contradictory, you know? And again, I know Aaron Webber doesn't represent the entirety of Sega. Aaron Webber's just trying to do his job. He's just trying to put a positive spin on the brand that makes sense, obviously, from a business standpoint. You want people to like Sonic, especially when there's new people from the movie. You want to encompass the brand as just of top, high-quality stuff, which... I guess I could see why the delays are so big because they probably know that they've got so many new people from the movie that'll be keeping their eye on Sonic that they want to like just blow away everyone. I just, there's no proof for it. I don't see any proof that they've changed at all. I, I just think it's unfair to tout this as the new Sega with zero evidence, nothing. And that is why the transparency issue is also so bad. Because if they were so confident in what they had, that this is a new Sega, like a renaissance of Sonic, if they were so proud of what they've got, then why haven't we seen anything? We're not asking for the game to be released this very fucking second. If they were so proud of what they've got, there would be no issue with showing us anything. Just anything at all. There would be zero issue. But there is. There is obviously an issue with them showing us stuff. Wow. I felt like kind of a rant right there. <laughs> I, I just stepped back for a second. I was like, whoa. But uh, yeah, it's just lack of faith in Sonic. That it hurts me the most. Lack of faith in the past stuff. Like, are they just going to toss everything they've had from the past to the side and like, not take any like ideas or just mindsets or any, anything, you know? Because... Sonic 06 in concept wasn't bad. They wanted to return to like three different gameplay styles, all being hedgehogs. They had Silver trying to be a brand new thing. And one overarching story, like the idea was not bad in the slightest. The execution was terrible, but the idea was fine. Are they just gonna ignore ideas like that, you know? Only time will tell. And in fact, we are so bloody close to E3 and June and Sonic's birthday that I will be shocked, shocked. If we don't see Sonic Colors and Sonic 3 and just, yeah, the collection, the Sonic collection with Sonic 1, 2 and 3 and Knuckles. If we don't see any of those at least in June, then yikes. Or Adventure Remake. I, I absolutely call it a hunch. I absolutely believe we'll get an Adventure Remake. That's why I'll end the video. I hope you all enjoyed. I know it's a, it's a rant. But I hope that people enjoy just putting these videos on in the background while they're doing other stuff. So that's kind of what they're here for. Sorry for the low production quality on these videos. I'm just I'm trying to find ways that I can actually spread my time evenly so I can work on this as well as build my own games, trying to apply for jobs, all of this stuff. So that is why videos at the moment are not of the highest quality in the world. So I apologize and hopefully it won't be like this forever. But I hope you're enjoying the stuff now. <laughs> yeah, anyways, anyways, thank you all for watching and yeah, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out, my dudes.